the followers of the World Bioeconomy Forum. We are delighted today to bring you Stefano Onhold, um, who is founder of the BKK CBKK, a sustainable productive chains initiative, which is basically disrupting the service of future generations. And that has Chocolate de Mendes as one of its investees. Um, Chocolate de Mendes recently won the Startup of the Year in the prestigious World Bioeconomy Forum Awards. And so we are delighted to have Stefano here to describe to us all about the startup. And um, so I think uh, we should go ahead. Stefano, thank you so much for joining us. And can you please tell us all about your company and how this has all happened? Yes, uh, well, good morning. Uh... Uh, here from uh, Brazil, uh, we, we are delighted uh, to have received this so prestigious uh, prize and um, it's a big honor to be with you. As you know, um, the Mendes Chocolates is in the heart of the Amazon. Our uh, factory is in Santa Barbara do Pará, which is in the Amazon, but not far from Belém, right? The city of Belém is one of the largest city in the Amazon, and so we are, let's say, we have the best of two worlds, uh, near a port in an airport, but still inside the Amazon. And uh, our purpose uh, is basically uh, to uh, add value at the origin. So our idea is to promote the well-being of the productive communities and to then transfer them in the real stewards of their landscape. This is a quite unique purpose, but that's basically how we look at our productive chains. And uh, for us, chocolate is probably one of the best vehicles uh, to promote uh, our, our purpose in the Amazon. Uh, and uh, you posted a very, very interesting question about how it fits in the circular by economy, right? So uh, one of our uh, great ideas is to connect those communities using technology with the end consumer, wherever it, he might be. So we are using uh, blockchain technology to give uh, credibility to the claims of our storytelling, right? And uh, of course, uh, we are not fully there as a startup. We are still in the beginning, but uh, we uh, are working very hard on the storytelling, um, interviewing uh, the communities, right? Uh, and uh, the chocolate, when it, uh, the cocoa, when it arrives to our factory, it already enters in some blockchain technology. Uh, where the traceability starts, right? So it, this connection between the producer and the end consumer is something that uh, is quite important for us. And as we go on in our interview, you will see that it will recurrently coming back. Fantastic. So um, can you tell us how you feel about uh, receiving this award? and perhaps the reasons why you and your company won. I mean, I can already see a few reasons. I mean, using the blockchain technology and some of the latest and then, uh, and then introducing the indigenous, uh, indigenous community. So can you please just um, enhance that a little bit further? Yes, well, um, to be true and honest with you, everybody here went completely bananas when we received uh, the news of the award. We could not imagine that our small chocolate company in the middle of nowhere, right, uh, uh, would uh, receive such an, an honor. So yeah, it's, it's very difficult to describe what happened here, right? But uh, if we look slowly uh, to the reasons, maybe we can find some answers there, right? So uh, we are working at the moment uh, <clears throat> in all the states of the Amazon, uh, we are basically using um, native cocoa. At the moment, we are already with 71 communities. And uh, very quickly, we will grow over 100 communities because we uh, 
uh, have in our works uh, the Ashaninka uh, people. Uh, they are a very traditional uh, indigenous people from Peru. They are more in Peru than in Brazil, but there are some really fantastic people on the Brazilian side and they are joining us. So there are 20 something communities there. And so very quickly we will be over hundred, right? At the moment we collect uh, the, those communities, they collect the, the cocoa and they bring it to nine pre-processing centers. Two are very special, well, all of them are very special to, our, <laughs> to us, but two are really very special to our heart because they are women's only, right? So this is in Brazil, something extremely important because the women, once they start to get their income, uh, they change completely, right? Uh, they're, they're, it's very difficult to explain what happens, right? But they, they can talk to their husbands in other terms, right? They, they're, they feel so confident that they, they explode in what they can do, right? So those two women community, uh, uh, communities are very special to us. Then we are working with two indigenous uh, uh, communities. One are the Yanomami in the very north of Brazil. It's a huge reserve. It's three times the, the size of Belgium for you to have an idea, right? And uh, you have only 26,000 indigenous people living in this huge reserve, but you have more or less 30,000 uh, illegal miners there, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the cocoa is a perfect vehicle to so that the young people are not co-opted by those illegal miners to work with them but to stay in the villages and grow the cocoa. So this is a, another fantastic story. Then we have the Paiter Surui, which are a little bit more to the south in, in another state uh, called Rondonia, very near to Mato Grosso. And they are, again, a fantastic story because they have this huge tradition, which in a moment was lost. And there was some uh, uh, coca traffic coming from Bolivia. And I don't know how, but they were engaged in this, right? And then, of course, when drugs come to those, it can't help. And now they want to uh, come back to their original uh, tradition, right? And chocolate is part of it. So it's, again, a fantastic story. Then we have uh, three riverside communities, which are, let's say, the most uh, common ones that you and may be very important that you have here. We have two small farmer communities and we have one quilombola. Quilombola, to explain, this is basically the, the quilombos, which in Portuguese mean the place where the slaves uh, were hiding when they could escape, right? So you have to imagine that uh, four or 500 years ago, uh, the slaves, when they managed to escape, they would be living in those quilombos. And some of them are exactly in the same place where they were centuries ago, right? So they have their, their own culture. So if you look to those uh, nine uh, centers, they are very fantastic. And we are already protecting around 350,000 hectares of forest, right? Uh, this is not easy to calculate because, of course, you're not using the, the whole area like the Yanomami, right? But mm. it gives you already some numbers, some ideas. And um, here you can see uh, the names of our uh, communities and uh, pictures. I think this is a lovely picture. This is Akara Su. Beautiful. So, I, so this is a riverside. So when you ask me, what is a riverside community, right? So many people think that you have a community means lots of people living in the same street. Well, not exactly, right? You have a river, which is the street, and you won't find any other house for, I don't know, a, kilom a kilometer maybe or two. This is a community, right? So uh, then you look, well, how do they communicate? Mm, that's already interesting, right? Then if you look here, 
this is a guy who loves the cocoa. He, and you can see from the picture that he really loves it, right? And then you have Cesar, which is our chocolatier and him uh, on the, in front of a Samauma. And they are looking up and you can imagine how tall this Samauma is, probably more than 40 meters high, right? So here you see, uh, when you see the ladies community we talked about, here is the leader of this community and she's really working, right? Mm -hmm. And they work hard, right? Uh, yeah. uh, then you can see the Yanomamis on the other side and Cesar giving uh, lectures here. So uh, pictures show everything. And I like this picture because you can see the 12 uh, bars we have with mm. the Yanomami in the center and all the others on the side. Mm. And uh, Stefano, what are the differences between the brands there? What, what are the, what, what is, just, just give us a few examples. Yeah, basically uh, for us, uh, we, we look to the origin, right? And when we talk again of connecting the origin with the end consumer is through uh, the technology, you're going to see that each of our bars uh, here uh, has the names on the bars, right? So if I go here, here you have Akara Asu. This one here is the, exactly the one that we saw. Yanomami are the indigenous tribes on the far north. Vale do Jari, this is on the a little bit more to the north of the state of Pará in Amapá, mm -hmm. they have here a reserve of 500,000 uh, hectares, mm -hmm. right? And this here is really, really wild. Uh, um, then you have uh, Paiter Surui, which is the other indigenous community. You have uh, Sakaguchi, those are the Japanese who came 100 years ago to Brazil. And this here is agroforestry. Mulheres da Floresta, this is in uh, women's of the forest. It's one of the ladies, right? And then we can search here for Amabela. Amabela is the other ladies, right? This here is Cupulati, which is also interesting because this is not made of cocoa. It's made of cupuaçu, which is like a Brazilian cousin of cocoa, mm -hmm. right? And it's a fantastic taste. So um, is, does each, so they're, they're obviously regional um, in, in, in what that, so they come from different regions, these different chocolates. But uh, apart from that different one made out of different uh, a plant variety, um, do they taste all the same or are there differences in flavors? Wow, it's, uh, they not only taste uh, different, but sometimes they taste different during the year <laughs> because it, this is really native cocoa. Uh, the concentration of cocoa is also completely different, right? It can be 70%, 80%, 60%. Uh, and now we have one, one only one with uh, uh, milk, a, a little bit of milk, so only 40% cocoa. Yeah, because yeah. some people like this kind, so they are quite unique in flavor. They are so different; it's 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 really amazing how cocoa can be so different from one place to the other. Excellent. And how about um, uh, production, production, and export? Uh, and uh, how how is all that going? Yes, we are uh, at the beginning of our production, so we are still in a very small factory. And until we build the new one, which will be next year, uh, our uh, production capacity is quite limited. So we are not uh, exporting. Yeah. Uh, we are just selling it mainly online, but also in some shops, but slowly because production is growing slowly. You have to imagine that when you go to the Amazon and, and you start, uh, one of the most difficult things is to how to escalate a fantastic product or a fantastic project, right? And the, the answer might not be very simple, but you need to go from informal to formality. Mm -hmm. And this looks like an easy thing to do, but it might take years because when you go to such a community and you ask, ah, who owns the land? And uh, sometimes they say, ooh, it was my grand great father. And you have any document? No, I don't have any doc document. Mm. And uh, how do you know where your land starts and finish? No, I don't know. I am just here, you know. 
And then when you go, to, uh, just to tell you, and then they don't have any license. Many of them don't ha even have their, their own documents. Mm. They don't have, right? Wow. So to bring everything to formality takes some time. Yeah. So we are lit working, let's say, if you look to the iceberg, right? We are working a lot under the water. Yeah. You don't see our work. It takes a long time until we will be able to be working on the top of the iceberg. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, the, I mean, it's a classic startup scenario, isn't it? I mean, in some ways, the startup's the easy bit because you know you design the prototype, but it's getting into full production, of course, which is uh, which is the challenge. Um, and added to that, you have the challenges that you're telling us about, you know, with the with the regions and the and uh, and the ownership. Yeah, very interesting. Yes, if I could, if I may, uh, tell you a little bit about how we try to connect the end consumer with the origin in the sense that we reward our consumer one for the preference he has given us by buying one of our bars. And we give him completely free one day of the neutralization of his carbon footprint, right? <laughs> That's a so, great idea. <laughs> yeah, so we made a small calculation and here you can see that Brazilian total carbon dioxide emissions, uh, this is based on 2020, which is the last official data, was of uh, 2.1 uh, million tons, right? Then you deduct the removals and you have the, la the, la the net emissions of 1.5 million uh, tons, right? If you divide by the population of Brazil that at that time was 260 million, 260 million, in, 16 million inhabitants, you come to a per capita emission of 7.5 tons per year. If you divide it by 365 days, you have approximately 20 kilos equivalent per day, right? So we bought a VERA certificate of carbon mitigations in the Amazon, and uh, we tokenize them, right? Uh, normally we buy 150 tons and we tokenize it in 6,000 tokens. So each one for one bar. And then we can give you as a consumer uh, uh, your, uh, the neutralization of one day of your carbon footprint. And more important than that, we bring you near to us, uh, near to the productive, uh, how you say, community, talking about something which is very special, which is maintaining the forest, right? And this is the way that we found to reward our uh, consumers and bring them very uh, near our uh, communities. And in the future, we will be able to uh, not only buy carbon <coughs> credits uh, from the Amazon, but be able to have those carbon credits from our productive communities, right? And then on a second moment, you will also be able to buy additional uh, neutralization. Let's say you are going for a weekend uh, this uh, trip and you want to neutralize this weekend, right? And then you can buy those additional. And this would be fantastic if you imagine that you don't even, even need to harvest the cocoa, produce a chocolate, send it to a, a, a city, you can contribute to maintain the forest by donating directly and neutralizing your carbon uh, uh, rewards. And everything we do, we do using blockchain technology uh, in order to give credibility to our claims. That is amazing, really. And what a brilliant idea as well, I mean, to, 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 to bring that in as well. But I suppose the really big thing is the taste test. How's the taste going down? What are the people saying who are consuming it? Yes, so what we found out is that uh, as everything in life, different people have different tastes, right? So this is really fantastic as so many people uh, uh, tell us so many different things uh, from the tastes, right? Uh, we uh, make a, 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 an analysis of the cocoa when it comes in, right, uh, at our uh, door. 
of course, uh, Cesar, our chocolatier, works very carefully with all the productive communities, uh, helping them in, in the way uh, that they will pre-prepare the cocoa to come from us, so it will already come. But he found out that many times he is not uh, uh, trying to bring his knowledge, but learning with them different uh, ideas how to pre-process it, and this has a very impact on the final taste, right? And uh, you won't believe it, but the cupulati, the chocolate made of cupuasu, which is something completely different, is one of the one which people like most. <laughs> Fantastic. Excellent. I've got to say that is a really a very, very interesting and such a worthy winner of our of Startup Award. I mean, you really are what the bioeconomy is all about. This is really what it's all about. So, um, so thank you very much for that presentation. Um, anything more to say on 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 the on on the, the chocolate side of things? Well, of course, uh, we, we could stay here uh, <laughs> probably the whole day, uh, going more in details. But uh, I think that I have uh, two big words for you, <laughs> which is thank you. Yeah. Well, that's an absolute pleasure. It's an absolute and a, a really very, very much a worthy winner there. We're delighted to have you as one of our winners. So um, I think we'll just end with another question to you, please, if that's OK. Um, just taking a more general view, uh, how do you see the importance of the circular bioeconomy when it comes to the health of the planet and the mitigation of climate change? Can you just give a conclusion as to how you see things on that front? Well, this is uh, really, really, really important because we all have to change our habits and we have to look <clears throat> to this circularity. If we don't do it, it will be very, very difficult uh, to mitigate the, the what I call the climate uh, change emergency, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that, that's why we, we want to connect the the end consumer with the reality of the Amazon so he can understand what it means. Uh, uh, we have other projects on the ocean. Uh, of course, more than half of the oxygen that we breathe comes from the ocean. Uh, as you know, also <clears throat> um, uh, in, in the ocean and uh, it, it, it's in Brazil, it's, it is so important, right? And that's why we want to, through the technology, bring the, the, the consumer to, to change his habits. We have to change the, what our diet uh, very quickly, right? We have to change uh, uh, how we treat uh, the single use of plastic, right? And uh, we at the Amazon, we found out that uh, the acai, which is one of the most important uh, and productive chains we have, they are producing probably around 550 million, uh, 550,000 tons of kernels, which are not used. Mm. So believe me, we just finished uh, a bioplastic uh, that is 100% biodegradable using basically those uh, wa this waste Right. And, yeah. and this is fantastic yeah. when we can change our habits and we can give to the end consumer a product, a, a one single use plastic, which comes from the circular economy. Yeah. And this can be compostable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it is the kernel which was badly disposed, yeah. made into some plastic. And then you can, uh, 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 this plastic uh, lid or whatever it is, can be compostable. So I believe that if we are successful doing this and telling more people to do it, we will, we will be able to win this battle. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And there's a perfect example of circularity, using what was once waste and turning it into a valuable product that will biodegrade. I mean, what more could you ask for than that? Stefano, you've been excellent. Really enjoyed that presentation, your enthusiasm around it. And congratulations once again for winning the Startup of the Year Award. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It was a honor and a pleasure being with you. Excellent. Thanks so much. All the best. <laughs>